All right, we continue to move along right here on the Ed Dean Radio Show. Here on our newsmaker line right now, book author Andrew Oak has got an interesting book. i got a copy of it right in my hand right now. Unusual for their time. It's called On the Road with America's First Ladies. Are you the First Ladies, man? Yes, sir, I am. It's been a wild <laughs> journey and an amazing travels, and I got them all in the book, and I'm trying to share them with everybody. So I'm going through this book. I'm reading a little bit of it. It is, it's about 200 and, and 280 pages long, well, a little bit less than that, but you, you talk about some of the locations you have visited and things like that. You know, we cover a lot of politics on this radio show. Of course, this book would be political, but when you went from every to, you know, Martha Washington, did you cover all the way to Michelle Obama? I did. You know, my travels took me for the C-SPAN series, uh, 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 Influence and Image, First Ladies, Influence and Image. I went to every home, library, museum, cemetery, church, train station, Every first lady, Martha Washington through Michelle Obama. What was the most entertaining first lady that you were covering in your book? There, there's a lot of entertaining first ladies. I mean, entertainment is something that a lot of them specialize in. Them, and it was fun to see the ones that were more social, like a Nancy Reagan who was out. Could Possibly, you know, I'd say she's had one, she had one of the best sense of humors of any first lady. She had the uh, unique ability to laugh at herself. So seeing those that, that put themselves in the public eye was, was an absolute blast. And look at the artifacts and the clothes and the speeches and the letters that made these women who they are. What did you think about uh, Eleanor Roosevelt? I mean, just because I, I know we don't have time to go through many of these, but we'll talk about some, you know, ones that have been around for the last 100 years. You know, we've always heard conversation about whether they were this or whether they were that. When you, when you checked out Eleanor, what was it you found out very interesting? Here's the most interesting thing about Eleanor Roosevelt is that she's the longest sitting first lady because her husband was the longest sitting president, elected to four terms, died uh, just after his, his fourth term that he got into. And, of course, Harry Truman takes over. But Franklin Roosevelt, FDR, was a mama's boy. He would not have been president had it not been for Eleanor Roosevelt. She is the one that encouraged him after polio and after – sort of uh, being encouraged by his mom to step out of the public light. She's the one that got him back out in the public light and got him elected. It's, it's, it's remarkable the influence these women had over their husbands' careers, their personal lives, their professional lives. And, and in many times, they, they, they married up with these women. Give me a president. I'll, I'll jump back to some of the first ladies here in a moment. Give me one that was heavily involved in the political world not so much trying to help out her president, but was very much involved in doing community service, helping out like um, uh, women's groups or charity groups or, or, or social groups out there. As far as you, a, a president that was that president's was wife, in activities? president's wife, president's wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. President's wife. I mean, one of the one of the one of the biggest ones that we don't really hear about or know about or list if we're listing five, ten, maybe even 15 first ladies is Lucy Hayes. Lucy Hayes is actually Eleanor Roosevelt before Eleanor Roosevelt. She's the one that when her husband, Rutherford Hayes, is uh, governor of Ohio, even before the White House, she went to all the mental institutions, the asylums, the, chair, the uh, orphanages, the, uh, the hospitals, and reported back to her husband to tell him what the conditions were like and what he needed to do as governor to change these things and make them better. She was, she was transformative, not transitional. She blazed the trails. She made the path. So women like Eleanor Roosevelt could come along and do what they did. What was it? Let's talk more po- political here. Um, when you did the book, again, we're talking with Andrew Oak, author of the book, On the Road with America's First Ladies. Let's talk about uh, Nancy Reagan. Was, uh, was, w- did you cover everything about the First Ladies? Did you cover the, the discussions of Nancy what it to be almost like in a weird way, the chief of staff when her husband was the president, all the horoscope, uh, astrology, or did you cover uh, certain other ins and outs, like how their political faith was and things? What areas did you cover and not cover in this book? Well, what we did was I would, I would talk to these locations, libraries, like I say, museums, churches, schools, and find out what they had in their collection. And I always divided it up like this. What kind of artifacts do they have to tell the story before the White House, right. during the White House, and after the White House? And so when you break it out into those, those categories, I mean, you think, most of what we know about these women, we know about their time in the White House. Now, the ones like Nancy Reagan that go on to live long years after, we know a considerable amount of them before. Or they have the political re- careers with their husbands as governors. But you do get into this personal kind of stuff. And the love relationship, the love story that was Nancy and Ronald Reagan – is very well told and very well documented. There's letters where 
they would they would be separated uh, uh, because of travel and things like that. And Ronnie would sit in a restaurant and write a letter to her as he ate dinner, as if he was having a conversation with her and back and forth. I mean, they were the real deal. They were really in love. And you do get you do find out. I did find out about these things that went on outside of the White House. Uh, uh, remarkable things around the, the time when he was shot, and then she did uh, consult a, an astrologer, and and there was no, there was no more. Uh, boy, she was just she she was she protected her husband's legacy at all costs. I Talk. mean, the first book she writes when she gets out of the White House is here's here's my story, here's what happened, this is the real deal. Talk to me about Bill and Hillary. You know, they said in the CBS interview back in 1992. And I know that they, she got thrown under the bus for saying this, but you know, hey, uh, for, you, with two, you get two for the price of one. We know that she was heavily involved with her husband and many of the political realities that he wanted to set forth. What kind of first lady would you ex- describe her as? She she was. Um, it's it's funny. We, we we you referenced Michelle Obama a little bit before. I thought Michelle Obama was going to be more of a Hillary Clinton, more of a policy first lady. Uh, less of a cause first lady and, and and Mrs. Obama has taken a more traditional first lady role but you know Hillary did not want to marry Bill she she was proposed to three if not four times wow. I was in the room that they got married in there were about eight people there she bought a dress off the rack the night before it was not a very romantic kind of uh, 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 love story like you would have with the Reagans and she clearly saw Bill as a rising star and she could catch on to his coattails but I was told down at the Clinton Home uh, Museum in Fayetteville, uh, Arkansas, that when she was driving down to move in with Bill, to get married to Bill, coming down from, from Washington, and she was working for a law firm uh, up in Pennsylvania doing work on the Watergate stuff, that she drove down with a friend and told the friend the whole way, you've got to talk me out of this. I can't even <laughs> say the word Arkansas. let move there. And I'm moving there for a man. I mean, she was big women's lib. She was all this other stuff. But she saw something and moved in and cleared out the dining room and called that the war room and started running and staging his political campaigns from there all the way forward. How do you describe Michelle Obama in your book? Yeah, in the book, this this first book is volume one. It's, it's Martha right. Washington through Ida McKinley, the 1700s right. and 1800s. We start uh, volume two, which I'm writing right now, with Edith Roosevelt, first first lady of the 20th century, on up through Michelle Obama. And I explain her, or will be explaining when I get to that chapter, exactly as I've just said, in that I really, really thought with her education, with the time that it is, with her being the first African-American first lady, she was really going to make some political moves and some policy stuff like we saw with Hillary Clinton. But she's almost more, I don't know, more Laura Bushish, uh, you know, where she takes on like children, uh, obesity and, and makes a garden and stuff like that. You know, you think of women doing the gardening, like you think of a woman being a librarian. It's sort of a more typical ladies first lady role. And I, I really thought with Michelle's background, she would be she would be doing a lot more policy. And she just hasn't. She's she's used the job, uh, the position as it's been more effective historically in that she does not become as polarizing as someone like Hillary does. She doesn't have those outward political ambitions. And I think it's a, probably a, a safer and better move, especially for her husband. I got 40 seconds. Explain um, Laura Bush. Humble? Laura Bush, very humble. That's one of the first ladies that I actually got the, uh, the honor of meeting and, and interviewing and things. She changed. She changed with the times as her husband needed. One of the most turbulent and controversial and, and full of tragedy and 9-11. I mean, she had to shift along with her husband and really switch up the game plan. And she, she, she did it fantastically. She did it just amazing, amazing ability to change and go to the international stage and go from things like literacy and reading right. to women's rights across in, in the Middle East and stuff. And she just did a phenomenal job. And the polls and, and, and her favorability reflect that. Get this book, On the Road with America's First Ladies, Volume 1 by Andrew Oak. Andrew, real quick, can they get this? Where can they get this? Uh, Amazon.com? Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes & Noble. Good. I can sign them if you order through firstladiesman.com. Right. Go to firstladies.man.com and all the information is right. there for you. Andrew, it's good to have you on today, man. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. All right. Andrew Oak here on the Ed Dean Radio Show. Continue to move along in just a few moments.